welcome to our English lesson today. We are on Thursday's lesson and we're following on from what we did yesterday with our alien words. So I hope you're ready. So we're going to start with a little bit of a vocab blast and I've got some words up on the screen that we have already looked at and we already know lots about, hopefully. Okay, so I'm going to go through them very quickly on the left and then we will do a little activity. So here I've got the word underneath, okay? And the word underneath, if you remember, means that you are positioned directly under something. We've also got the word plod, which means you are walking quite heavily and slowly. We've got the word selfish, which means you're just looking after oneself and not thinking about others. We've got burst, where it means a substance is coming out of something. And we've got calm, you're feeling very chilled and very relaxed. So I want you to spend a couple of minutes just thinking about which word types these words belong to. And I'll explain a little bit what I mean. So for example, here we've got the word underneath. And underneath is telling me the position of where something is. Therefore, it is a preposition. Okay, Ooh, can't spell today. So we've got underneath is a preposition. Have a little think, what type of word is plod? Is it a noun, a verb, or an adjective? Have a think, what is selfish, burst, and calm? Just pause the video now. Fabulous, well done if you've had a go at doing those at home. So the word plod is something that is being done, therefore it's an action and it is a verb. We've also got the word selfish, which is describing how somebody is behaving or feeling. So that is an adjective. We've got the word burst, which means when you come out and substance comes out of something. So that is also a verb, it's an action, something that's happening. And then calm, which is describing how somebody is feeling and therefore that is an adjective. So hopefully you got all of those at home correct with me too. Well done if you did. So let's move on to the main part of our lesson today. So we are looking at Bigu and I know the children in school are so excited and engaged within this. So I really hope you are too. And we've been thinking about what Bigu left us last week. Now, she left us a couple of weeks ago, didn't she? A letter. And in this letter, it had some alien words in, can you remember? And the reason it had these alien words in is because Bigu has only recently joined us on planet Earth, so she is slightly unfamiliar with the different words and phonics that we need to make real words. So she was writing her letter and some of these words were real words and some of the words were alien words. So yesterday, you had a little go at home of sorting these words into real words and alien words. And some of you even did my challenge where you had a go at creating your own alien words as well using these sounds. So here, I've got some examples, okay? So we've got some down the bottom that we're going to try and have a go at sorting. And I've already got one here for us. And this word is l oak loke down at the bottom can you find the real word that matches the alien word loke so we'll look for the same sound well done if you matched it with joke because here i've got my o got my o and i've got the k sound in the middle what about another alien word here i've got j Ike, Jike. Can you find me the alien word that matches Jike at the bottom of the screen? Where is it? Where's the real word that matches that alien word? Well done, Bike. Fabulous. Hmm, what other real words have I got? Hmm, I've got, oh, I can see the real words. I'm going to find the alien words here. Trum, Trum. Where's the alien word? Where's the real word that matches my alien word, drum? There it is, drum. Well done. I've also got another alien word here, J-O-N-Joan. 
Where's the real one? Phone, superb. And this one, I've got an alien word, pune, pune. What real word could I have? Tune, well done. So we created these yesterday, didn't we? And, you know, we're trying to get Bigu to think that, yes, these are alien words, but this is how we say them in the real words. And then you are going to have a little go pretending to be aliens as well. So I want us today to do something using these words that we've looked at to maybe cheer Bigu up, maybe to make her laugh, make her smile. Okay, so we're going to write some silly poems using her phonics words. Um, that are similar to our words and that are going to put a big smile on her face. What do you think? Yeah. So if we're going to write our poem today, we need to make sure that we can match some of these words that we had, okay? Because we're going to really need them today. So we're going to use these and this is how we're going to create our poem. So let me give you an example. So I'm going to start matching them up. I might do it in different colours, actually, with my highlighter pen. So I'm going to start with green. So here I've got the alien word, ape, fape. And if I was going to match it to my real word, it would be k, ape, cape. So pause the screen for a second and see if you can match the real words and the alien words together, because you're going to need them in a second. Fabulous. I'm going to continue now to highlight mine. You can check whether yours are the same as well. So here I've got poon, poon and I've got t, you, n, tune. I've also got j, oak, joke, l, oak, loak. I've got pi and sty and so forth. Oh, I've not done them in the certain colours. I'll have to try and remember. So now I'm going to use these to write my silly poem. So I'm going to keep with a similar structure to my poem, okay? And the structure that I'm going to use is that at the end of each line of my poem, the two words need to rhyme, okay? So they need to rhyme. Therefore, I need to use two words, one alien word, one real word, because they're the same words with the same sound and so they're going to rhyme and they're going to come at the end. So I think for my first two lines in my poem, I'm going to use the words joke and loke. I'm going to start by using this alien word first, okay? So my sound in the word is O and I'm going to say, she told us, ah, so she told us ah. And what did she tell us? And this is where that alien word is going to come in because it's going to come at the end of this line. So she told us ah. Is it she told us a joke or she told us a loke? Well, in alien language, it was a loke, wasn't it? So that one came first. She told us a loke, comma. I'm going to start a new line now. Watch this. But we think she meant... What did we think she meant? Joke, because that matched. But we think she meant joke. Great. Okay, so look here. I've got loke and I've got joke. And they are my two words that have the same sound. Okay, so we've called that a rhyming couplet and they go at the end of my lines. Let's see what other ones I could use. So I've got loke and joke. I've used those ones. I'm going to tick those off. Tick. Tick. Mm, what else could you do? So she told us something. What about if we use the... I know. Let me get my yellow highlighter out now. What about sty and pie? Yes, yeah, sty and pie. So those two rhyme. So now I'm going to use these to write my next part. Now, I can't say she told us a sty but we think she meant pie, because that isn't what you do with a pie. What do you do with a pie? Ah, you eat it. So we're going to keep the frame the same, but slightly change it. So watch this. Instead of she told us a pie, a sty, we'd say she ate a sty, okay? She 
eight. Now, when we say the sound A, it can be A-Y, A-I, but this one is a split digraph. So we're going to go eight, and then my E on the end. So she ate a sty, but we think she meant pie. Well done. Let's see what else I can find on here that rhymes. Mm, that I could steal and put in my poem. I'm going to use orange now. Uh, what about pune and tune? Yeah, I think I'm going to use those ones. Right. So now we need to think about the verb again, okay, with pune and tune. So the real word is tune. Would she eat a tune? No. Would she see a tune? Would she tell us a tune? Hmm. Maybe she'd heard a tune. Yeah, she heard a pune, but we think she meant tune. Fabulous. Right, I'm going to stop my poem there because I don't want to give you too many ideas. OK, I want you to think of some of these yourself. So I'm going to go through them now, my little poem, and just see and make sure that my sounds are the same and they match up with the sound in the word below at the end of my line. And I need to make sure these verbs make sense as well. So she told us a loke. So here's my O sound. But we think she meant joke. There's my O sound again. So they match up. She ate a sty, my I sound, but we think she meant pie. Yeah, they match up, great. And you can eat a pie, so that makes sense. That's the right verb. She heard a pune, well, there's my U, but we think she meant tune. Ah, so they write as well, and the verb is correct because it's something that you hear. So that's my little poem that I created for Bigu, and hopefully it will cheer her up. I want you to have a little go at writing your own poem. You might only just do two lines, just like I've done here, of your poem. You might want to think, oh, I'm going to challenge myself and do four, or you might even do the whole six where you've got three sets of rhyming couplets, okay? See how you get on. Once you've done it, I want you to go through it and just like I've done here, I want to see if you can identify the sound buttons or the sounds that you've used in the words at the end of your poem, okay? Because I want to make sure that we can use our phonic sounds and really cheer Bigu up. So this is the screen that you may need to do this at home. So you can pause it now and then just write your poem underneath. You don't need to print anything off of today's lesson if you don't want. And some of us have got something that looks a little bit like this, which is more to scaffolders, okay? So here we've got she, something, the, something. So just like before, you need to go through these words at the bottom down here, decide which ones are real words, which ones are alien words, and match them up. And then the verb goes in this box. So here we've got had, and here we've got hit, okay? So she had the, but we think she meant, or she hit the, but we think she meant. And these words and these gaps here are down here for you to use, okay? So have a little go at doing that and try and make up some really silly poems to try and cheer big you up. Have a lovely time doing this. I'm sure you're going to come up with lots of creative poems using your phonics. And I will see you later for a fabulous phonics session. Bye, everyone.